In verse number 10, we're going to kind of go hit another deal before we move on to, <clears throat> I, I have two messages in my notebook. This is the one I feel like God wants us to preach today. So you pray for me while I'm preaching and uh, I'm having the time of my life. If I'd have known 62 is going to be so good, I'd have got here faster. Amen. Y'all don't believe that, do you? You don't? Man, I cut 20-some trees yesterday. I had a blast. Got wore out, but I had a blast. <laughs> I'm telling you, no, seriously. And the reason I'm having a blast is because I'm enjoying the fruit of a disciplined life. Now, I'm not, a real dis- I'm not a real disciplined person, but to the degree that I've disciplined my si- myself to biblical disciplines, I'm telling you, the crop is coming up, and I'm having a blast. And uh, when I read John chapter 10 and verse number 10, where it says, Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. You see that now in the last part of that verse? He said, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. Ain't that the truth? But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life. That's salvation. That's eternal life. And that they might have it more abundantly. I, I just got through enjoying abundant life here this morning. I was up here singing. And I think if I counted right, there's four grandkids gathered around me while I was singing. Amen. Just kind of snuggled up with grandpa, you know. Boy, that'll make you sing. Amen. Amen. And then we got ready to pray. And man, them grandkids, they wanted to pray. And I, I thought, my land of living ain't this good. If I'd noticed this good, it got here quicker. I'd had kids when we was 20, not when we was 23. But anyway, I'm just saying that there's a lot of good things as you get older if you sow the right kind of seed. He said there he came to give us life more abundantly. I want to talk about that a little bit. Psalms chapter 1. Let's look at Psalms chapter 1. You see your sheet. Now you need a pencil, a piece of paper, or you husbands have your wife write while you listen and tell her what to write in or whatever you want to do. Look at Psalms chapter 1. Ain't nobody in the world hardly believes Psalms chapter 1. You see what you really believe is what you practice. Not what you say, it's what you practice. That's what you really believe. Everything else is... Right? What you believe is what you practice. Blessed. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. When I got saved, I started obeying that passage of Scripture. I quit hanging around with the scornful and the wicked and all that garbage, especially the ungodly counsel. And then God switched my life over, verse number two. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And that means the Bible, amen. amen. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit. There it is. I'm talking this morning about the fruit of a disciplined life. He, shall, he said his, bring, he, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. That's important. It doesn't always happen when you plant corn. I don't go out the next morning expecting to eat roasting ears. There are trees that you're going to plant that you're going to, you may not even get to eat the fruit off of them, but your ch- grandchildren might. You don't go out here and buy 10 apple and pear and peach trees from Stark Brothers and plant them and expect to get peaches that fall. It don't happen that way. There's a season has got to come, but you need faith to plant. He said his leaf also shall not wither. I believe that means that you still have the joy and the, and the sap of God in you when you're 91, Daddy. I really believe that. I believe a man can still smile, still be joyful, still anticipate the sun coming up, still enjoy life, uh, no, matter what's, no matter how old you get. He said, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, you need to understand what's true biblical prosperity is not what the world calls it. The Bible talks about true riches as opposed to the world's riches. But God does make a man's efforts and his labor prosper if he'll do what the Bible said, and that's delight in the Lord and meditate in his word day and night. Verse 4 says, The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. You can turn there later on and read this, but it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. God promises that. God's not just talking off the side of his mouth. God don't do that. God is serious. God says, you'll meditate my word. He said, I'll make what you do successful. 
And then the last passage of scripture on your text at the top of the page is Galatians chapter 6. Nine times out of ten when that is preached from the pulpits or taught from the Sunday school class, it's all about sowing the wrong seed. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. I believe you can sow good seed. I believe you can sow good things in life and expect to reap it. I go out and plant green beans and plant corn and plant tomatoes. I expect that to come up. Amen. I planted some wheat this fall. Guess what came up? Wheat. Guess what ate it? The cows ate it. And that's good. That's why I planted it for. I've planted fescue in the fields and fescue comes up. And for years and for years and years and years, you got hay out there for the cattle to eat. What I want to tell you young people and all of us today is this. You can sow good seed. Lots of good seed. I want to say thank you to the young men yesterday who took a truck and went down to my daddy's and got wood and took it over to Sister Melody's. I believe four of the young men of this church you know, just volunteered and got the, got the truck and went and hauled wood and did something. They're sowing good seed. Sowing good seed. And God wants you to do that. Now, I want to talk about anticipating the fruit of a disciplined life. I'm telling you, life is lived day by day, hour by hour, moment by moment. It's the little things. But the funny thing is, first thing you know, five years has went by. And you look back and you say, I didn't get that done or I didn't do that. Ten years goes by, boy, I wish we'd have done that. Twenty years goes by, wish we'd have done that. I am telling you, if you go into the army, best I can tell, I've never been there, but everybody I've talked to and everything I've seen, you're going to be disciplined. You don't get up when you want to. You don't go to bed when you want to. You don't even go do what you, you don't even wear what you want to wear. You don't eat what you want to eat. You're disciplined. If you want a blessed life and see the fruit of an abundant life, you need to develop disciplines. And it's never too late to do that. Now, let me say before I start this message, I'm excited. I'm encouraged. If I put you to sleep, happy dreams. I'm going to preach on. All right. If I can't keep you awake, that's my fault. If you're that tired. Now, I'm just going to tell you this. There are times in life when you keep disciplines pretty well. There are areas of life where you may be well disciplined and areas where you're not disciplined. Don't beat somebody else to death because they're not disciplined where you are. Or they're in a period of their life where they're just not disciplined themselves, maybe as they did one time. It kind of, you just, it's, it, you have to fight the devil and the flesh and the world. But the key is, is develop disciplines and purpose with God's grace to live those disciplines and to do them. My job today to you and this message God has given me is to encourage you and to challenge you, to exhort you, to charge you, to make up your mind that you're going to have some fruit come to you in the road. You're going to have some fruit when you get done with this life. And you're going to have some fruit along the because you sowed the right kind of disciplines. The first discipline is early rising. If you want to write that in, fill in the blank. Early rising. Early rising. One of the things that is robbing more people than I know of is sleeping late. Yes. Now you can't go to bed. You can't, I can't get up early if I don't go to bed early. Amen. Now I want to tell you, you, you you, you can't sit up with the aisles and hoot with the aisles and get up with the chickens. <laughs> Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something. How many here have lived long enough to know this? That if you get up early, you will get more done by 10 or 11 o'clock than if you get up late all day long. I'm telling you right now, there's something in the design of God with time and energy in your life and your body that if you'll get up early, you'll get more done in two or three hours than if you get up late and try to do something all day long. You ought to say in your heart and mind today, I don't care how old or how young you are, I am going to quit sleeping late. I am going to, now if you work all night, that's a different deal, okay? If you're a, on the second shift, that's another deal. I'm talking about people who live in a normal world, amen. All right. Well, nobody lives in a normal world. But I want us to encourage you today, get up. Can I give you something real practical that's good about getting up? You need to go to the bathroom. You need to get those poisons out of your system before it drains the energy that you need for that day's work. 
Did you know if you lay there and don't get up and go to the bathroom that the toxins in your body will start spreading through your bloodstream and you'll be tarder than when you you'll be tarder in two hours when you get up than you was laying in bed. Get up and go to the bathroom. If y'all go back to bed, I guess do what y'all do. Get up, amen. Did you know the Bible says Abraham got up early. Moses got up early. Job got up early. Joshua got up early. Jesus got up early. There's a, all the great men in the Bible got up early, amen. amen. Thank you, brother. I ain't getting too many of them. We'll get, maybe I'll get some more after a while. You say, Reggie, I'm wore out and tired. Get to bed. You will not have the discipline of getting up early if you don't have the discipline of going to bed. Shut that stinking bomb, that Hollywood slop hole off. You're not helping yourself watching that garbage. It's vanity. You know it. Why? It's going to get quiet. I'm trying to help you. I'm telling you something. There's, this is a chain reaction thing. You don't go to bed early, you won't get up early. You don't get up early, you'll miss your devotions. Maybe breakfast. Maybe even being able to say hi to the kids. Get up early. A discipline of life. It will produce fruits in your life. As I said, get up early rising, get to bed early. Get to bed early if you're filling in the makes it. Number two, once you've gotten up, get with God. Devotions. Daily devotions. Have a plan, P-L-A-N, of reading the Bible. Have a plan. You've got the first five books of the Bible. It's called the Pentateuch or the, the Law. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Then you've got what's called the History Books. And that takes you up to the Psalms, uh, Proverbs, Ecclesiastics, Song of Solomon. That's what they called the Poetry Books. Then after that, you have the prophets and the, have the major and the minor prophets. After that's the New Testament, you have the Gospels, then the book of Acts, then the epistles and the book of Revelation. Divide those up into those sections. Develop you a plan. If I was you, I'd at least read three chapters in the Old Testament and two in the New. If I were you, I would read Hebrews chapter 11 very frequently. So that'll tell you what's going on when you're reading the Old Testament. But read your Bible. It's good to read a Proverbs every day for the month. There's 31 chapters in Proverbs. Read it. I try to read at least two Psalms every day. Read Proverbs the, uh, the day of the month every, every, every day if I can. I don't get it done all the time. But just because I miss a day don't mean I quit. Now, I, I, I kind of read through books. I may be on 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy. I, I don't know. what it, I may be in different places. And preaching has a lot to do with that. But get some kind of a plan. If you don't have a plan... You ain't going to do nothing. You're going to go, well, I don't know where I'm at. Mark your chapters where you was. You miss a day. That way you can pick it back up again. Some of you sitting there saying, if I'd known he was going to preach on this, I'd have stayed at home. <laughs> this will help you. Amen. This will help you. Amen. It'll be a blessing to you. Amen. The best thing you'll ever do is read your Bible. Now have a plan. Then over there on the right, this little deal starts with O and it has three letters after that. Can anybody guess what it means? What, is, what the word is? Four little, there's four letters in the word and the first letter is O. Obey. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. You're going to read your Bible. If it says something, do it. What on earth is the object of reading it? And I don't like that one. I ain't doing that, God. Listen, if you want blessed, you want to see the fruit of a disciplined life, obey what you read. Thank you, Ralph. I appreciate it. Obey what you read. It is, if you do not apply what you read, the next thing down there is, is uh, uh, read your Bible, daily devotions, your Bible reading, prayer and meditation. Need to learn how to think on what you're reading. How's that apply to what's going on in my life? Why, if I was having wife troubles, I'd read everything I could about every woman in the Bible. Hey, before you come to your pastor, before you go to the shrink, why don't you talk to God about what's wrong with your wife? <laughs> you might find out there ain't nothing wrong with her as you all along. You might find out, hey, the Bible said, you know what? Dwell, you husbands dwell with your wives according to knowledge. That your prayers be not hindered. Man, I'm telling you something. This book is a gold mine. Amen. 
It's worth more than all the libraries and gold in the whole world. This is the book, man. This is the book. And God wants you to meditate in it. Read it. I'm telling you something. I'm encouraging you this morning. Have daily devotions. Have a time with God. Amen. Have a time with God. Read your Bible. And then pray. The Bible's God talking to you. Prayer is you talking to God. Meditation is you thinking on the whole deal. You are thinking on it. Amen. And so meditate on it. Number three, we got to go. I could preach on that all morning long. Hey, do you know what Job said? I mean, it was what Job said about the Bible. He said, yea, I have esteemed the words of thy mouth more than my necessary food. God, Job says it's more important for me to read the Bible than it is for me to eat food in the morning. Yeah, you're right. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing. He just didn't pick, God just didn't pick anybody to go through what he went through. And so do that. Number three, fasting. I know that's old time stuff, but I'm telling you, God still, woo, honors fasting. How uh, the Bible says, well, I've got somebody helping me back there. <laughs> Who is that? Give him, a, give him a gold star. Amen. Give him a gold star. Fast, amen. Learn how to fast. Now, if you're going to fast, fast in secret. Don't go around telling everybody what, how spiritual you are. But I'm telling you, listen, if you'll fast as the Holy Spirit of God leads you and as he directs you and be consistent with it. Now, I'm going to give you something about fasting. I'm 62 years old. I've never been good at fasting. I have a hard time with fasting. I have to fight my flesh to fast. But fasting pays off. It not normally even in that year that you fast. You fast, you will see it usually four to ten years down the road. The results of fasting. That's a fact. Jesus said, this kind cometh forth but by nothing but by prayer and fasting. There's a discipline of life. Now, if under that number three, fasting for power in spiritual warfare. Raising your children is a spiritual warfare. Raising your family is spiritual warfare. Fast and pray for your children. Pray for the Holy Ghost of God to brood over the hearts and spirits of your children. And pray and fast. You can't hardly fast without praying. And you, it all goes together. Now I'm going to give you a second thing about fasting. It'll help your health. Isaiah 58 says that, the, that your health will spring forth speedily. Is not this the fast that I've chosen? You ought to write down Isaiah 58 and read what God says that he will do through fasting. And I'm just excited. Amen. You know what? It is one of them sleepy mornings, isn't it? I understand that. And I understand if I was sitting out there, you'd have to be a bouncing to keep me coming. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I'd get sleepy on you. But I'm saying to you, it's exciting to be in the word of God. It's exciting the life that he said he came to give life more abundantly. And I want to challenge you to fast, fast. Oh, see God do some great things through fasting, but your health will be better if you fast. Now they're going to try to give you all them pills. Okay. For everything. But did you know if you fast, a lot of that stuff will fix itself. Now, I'm not a good faster, but I know some people that have fasted. And if you'll fast long enough, you'll be shocked what will come out of your body. It ain't no wonder you sick. Poison that gathers up over the years in your intestines. Did you know most diseases came from, come from the, uh, uh, what's that big, I, I just call it the big one, uh, the, the, the big intestine, large, colon. Colon is where most diseases Spring forth from because your colon is, see, everything's digesting and moving into the organs and moving it, moving into the bloodstream and then from the bloodstream into all the organs. And I want to tell you something. You need to eat right. Well, let's get on down. We'll get on that. Number four, but learn to fast for spiritual power and for health. Number four, witnessing. Man, I'm going to tell you something. Learn to witness. Learn to witness. Learn to witness. I tell you, just make it part of who you are. I mean, this past week I had a situation arise. I don't know why. I'm, Jim, my problem is I, I just assume everybody's saved if they act nice. That is not true. Did you know I was sitting and visit with a man this week? He was talking about the presidential election, talking about politics and everything. Pretty soon he started moving things a little bit toward the spiritual line. And I'm sitting there like a dodo, you know, and I'm not even thinking on spiritual lines hardly. And all of a sudden something dawned on me. You never have asked this man whether he's saved or not. Did you know I kept going in a little pretty soon the Holy Spirit said, ask him if he's saved. Ask him if he's saved. Pretty soon I said, hey, I've never asked you. Have you been saved? Have you been born again? And he said, Reggie, I ain't never been saved. Oh, my goodness. The next 30 minutes I was able to give him the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know what? Now I've got somebody new to pray for. But did you know I was just assuming he was saved? I'm telling you, if you get it, you, you know what's wrong with most Christians? They don't exercise their faith. 
And you've got to exercise your faith by sharing your faith, by giving the gospel to people. Get you some tracts, get you some CDs. I had a man call me from somewhere this week. I don't know. By the way, we got a, I, I, you know what makes me excited? I come walking in here this morning. Now, last week, there's a guy sent a truck driver, 37-year truck driver, sent $1,000 of this church to help the CD ministry. I'm going to tell you something. If you're doing what God wants you to do, he'll provide the funds to do the ministry, and you don't have to ask nobody for the money. Whoop! Amen! Well, this week, I come up here and sit on the seat, and there's a letter from Pennsylvania, and the family there, and a $350 check in there saying, God's blessed us through that internet ministry. We want to help in that thing. Well, I'm having more fun than a, than a monkey at a fair. Amen. I'm telling you, listen, it's exciting to work with a God who's powerful and, and knows everything going on. Amen. Well, I'll tell you something. God's in it, man. I'll tell you what you, I just want to get in the plow with him. Amen. And so witness, I'm telling you, uh, uh, learn how to pass out a track, uh, leave a track, do this, that, or the other. But this guy called me from somewhere and left a message, said he need to talk to me. And he said, Reggie, what I want to talk to you about, he said, I want to know if we can duplicate the CDs. I said, sure you can. He said, Reggie, I'm telling you right now. He said, I take them CDs. He said, I found out that people will listen to those when they won't read a track. He said, it, it opens up the door for me to be witness to people. He said, he said, we just want to know if we can, and can duplicate them. I said, as long as you don't change the content, help yourself, just go for it. And there's no charge. Amen. Just sowing the seed, sowing the seed, sowing the seed. Boy, I want to tell you something. That's exciting. And you know what? It just If you witness, you'll find out that that witness, he will multiply itself. And by the way, you ain't never wasted your time talking to a man about his soul. Well, we got to roll. Number five, this is going to shock you to death. That I'd even preach on dare such a thing. Orderliness. Number five, a discipline in life is orderliness. I want to tell you, pick up, clean up. Amen. It's going to cripple you. It's going to keep you from getting stuff done in your life. You, you know what? You're going to do something that can't find what you're going to do it with. Because you didn't put it up. There's a place for everything and everything ought to be in this place. And I'm a hypocrite. I'm a hypocrite for preaching that. But I believe it and I try to do it. I'm weak in that area. I'm not disciplined like I lead. But I want to be a man. But I want to be. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm preparing a message. And I'll tell you what, I've got a library. If I don't know where them books is at, then I maybe want to look up a reference or look up an illustration or look up something I've heard about that or read about that. And I don't know where that thing's at. If I miss it. I don't get it. I'm telling you, listen, be orderly. Keep, keep your home clean. I'm telling you, pick up, amen. Keep your bedroom clean, kids. Amen. I'm telling you, listen, it's going to hurt you. It's going to ruin. It's going to, it's going to rob you. Orderliness. Let everything the Bible said be done decently and in order. Say Christian people used to be known for their orderliness and their cleanliness. Have an order in your home, amen. Have order in your home. I'm talking about this morning, listen, uh, this, this thing of having order. If, you got a, if you're in a construction business and you've bought $42,000 worth of tools but don't know where they're at, what good they going to do you? You out there on the job and you can't find your tools? Labors are wasting. Amen. Pick up, clean up. By the way, it's dangerous not to be orderly. Some of these boys work out there at the mill. I'm going to tell you something. That stuff piles up and piles up and wood chips and bark piles up and piles up and cut off pile up. And they're handling these ties that weigh 200 and some pounds. And if we let them trip over stuff, or you don't keep the shields on your equipment, endangering people's lives, God wants us to be a people of order, amen. I'm telling you something, if you'll discipline yourself to orderliness, how'd you like to walk into Walmart and in no signs tells you where nothing is, and they just put it where it come handy for them? Now, they would be fights in Walmart then. I'm going to tell you something, it makes them money to be orderly. It makes a store money to be orderly. If you don't know what you've got or what you're about out of, you have no earthly idea what you need. Orderliness. Well, declutter. Pick up. Where's my Bible? <laughs> Number six, discipline in life. Now, I'm running through these. I could take a Sunday for each one, but I didn't figure you could handle that. I didn't want to bore you to death. Number six, learn. 
Learn, never cease learning. Never quit learning. Learn, 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 learn. Study all your life. You know what some of you ought to do? You're bored to death. You ought to come up here and, and say, Mona, I want to take a class in world history, or I want to take a class in science or algebra or geometry or physics. Learn. Learn. Never quit learning. You think, well, I did well, I can't wait to you ain't ne- if, if you're right, if you're right in your heart, you ain't never going to get out of school anyway. Fact of it was, when I graduated, the, the, the thing just started. I found out how little I knew. Learn, amen? I'm talking about, listen, learn skills. Learn skills. It won't hurt you learn how to do something. Can I tell you something? I want to know something. How many of you boys know how to use a chainsaw? Raise your hand. All right. Those of you who couldn't raise your hand, I want your mom and daddy to buy you a small chainsaw for Christmas. A dull one. <laughs> a used one that will not start. And I'm telling you, listen, you need to learn. I'll tell you, it's a shame boys grow up and not know how to use a chainsaw. Not know how to use a hammer. Not know how to use a garden hoe. Thank you. I'm getting some amen right here and I appreciate it. I'm talking about learn, study hard, learn skills, learn how to read, learn how to observe things, be discerning. Read Proverbs. I'm telling you, listen, you need to learn. Oh, David, he learned something growing up. He learned how to respond to Saul. David learned some things. Let me tell you something. You know why God used David? Because even though he wasn't in some big place, but where he was, he was learning. He was learning how to be a shepherd, how to take care of that stewardship, what was in his care. He was learning military tactics. He could, I mean, to talk about so kill somebody with a slingshot, you're pretty mean. Learn how to hit what you're hitting. Did you know those boys back in the Old Testament could sling a slingshot with right hand or left hand and not miss by hair's breath? That's what the Bible says. Left hand or right hand, not miss by hair's breath. I can't even shoot a 22 that good. Skills. He also had the skill of music. Saul had evil spirits bothering him. David could play the harp. Skills. Trained. He was trained in weaponry. Learn everything you can learn. Learn every opportunity you can learn. I, I'll tell you something right here. And, and, and Ezra, I hope you don't mind me doing it. But I'll tell you what. Is Daniel here? Is he not back here? Is Daniel here? Daniel, is, are they? Daniel, where are you? They're way back there. I'm going to talk about these boys a little bit because I'm proud of them. And I'll tell you something right now. That, that I want to say something flat out and flat footed while I'm on this subject. Is that we got a bunch of boys in this church house that are workers. Yeah. I'm talking about they're workers and, and they're not afraid to work. And I thank God for that. I think it's part of the scriptural, biblical culture that's in this church and in the families of this church. But I, I'm going to tell you how to learn something. Daniel come up to me after he said, I heard you bought a sawmill. I said, yeah. He said, you need any help? I said, matter of fact, I do. I said, I need somebody to off bear. It's going to be lots of fun. He said, when do I start? I said, Monday morning, be out there. He come out there Monday morning and he's off bear. And I'm, I'm sitting there trying to learn how to do this meal. I'd never come along in my life. Didn't know nothing about it other than what Tom Martin told me. He said, you make six baits, seven baits, and seven by nines. Your boards need to be an inch and an eighth. Okay. I roll that first field down. I'll tell you what, I didn't know nothing. Zoom goes through the saw, you know. I'm like, I mean, everything, doing everything wrong, hitting everything wrong, you know. But just learn. I'm 61 years old, but I'm not too old to learn how to cut a log. I ain't too good to do that. I've had more fun to barrel of monkeys. I'm serious with you. Now, if I'd have done, put Mike on. If I'd have done this all my life. Anyway, he says about two days into it, late in the day, one day, he keeps coming up there. I'm so slow, he's got time to stand beside me, okay? And he's a watching, and he's a looking, and he's looking. Now, this thing's got handles everywhere, okay? And it's got all kinds of pieces of stuff. There's fences, and there's a turner, and there's a clamp, and there's, I mean, it, and it goes up and down and that way. I mean, there's all kinds of handles on it. Well, the guy that sold it, they didn't sell it to me, but one of the guys over at Baker, he said, Reggie, you don't want to get one of these old men to do that. Said they that done the old circle, circle saw. Said you can't teach them anything. It's like a dog, teaching a dog new trick. I said, well, who do you get? He said a kid that's worked that's worked at games. I'm like, ain't many of them know how to work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 
But anyway, I looked over at Daniel and I could see it in his eyes. I said, you want to cut these logs, ain't you? He said, yeah, I'd like to try. I said, get done work, you can try it. Did you know by the end of the week, he was cutting them faster than I was cutting them? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I, you know what that is? I said, glory to God, I'm out of here. I'm going to, I've I just been honest with you, tickle me to death. My archers are bad, I couldn't stand. And I'm telling you what, that kid, I mean, he cuts logs like a wild man now. The other day, they cut 111 logs with that bandsaw. One day. This, but now here's where I'm really going to. Now, Daniel's, see, he got married. And when you get married, you know, guys, know something happens. You've got to learn, st- you're going to do whatever you've got to do to make a living to feed your wife. That's right? Yeah. right? So you, got, you don't know nothing about it, but you're willing to do it. He's not married. <laughs> Take her to leave it. But I kept telling him. So he starts to, he starts to want to, to cut a log. Well, he did what Reggie did, Tom. The first thing he did is throw a log over in, in the floor. You ever done that, Tom? He's shaking his head. Yes, that ought to make you feel good. That man's third generation or fifth generation longer. But you know what I kept him? I said, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. You can do this. He said, no, I don't want to do it. No more. I'm going to tear everything up. I said, you can do it. And you know what? He's been doing it. And Daniel go out and do something else. And he'll take over the controls. And he'll start doing it. I'm going to tell you something. You know what I tell these boys? You may not. You may, two years, you may be in Lapland. Who knows? But it won't hurt him to know how to cut a log. It won't hurt him to understand what's a seven bait, what's a seven by nine, what's a, what's a six bait. Uh, and, and I'm going to tell you something else. You know why I was really glad to get away from it? Because you've got to know math. <laughs> I mean, how many of you would like to take a 13-inch log and start cutting down an inch and three-sixteenths and hitting the fractions as you're going down as fast as the machine will move? Now, here's what's really interesting. That thing had a set of set works with it, which does it for you, but it don't work. I bought a used mill. I don't buy stuff new. But you know what, Tom? It's the best thing ever happened. He'll t- Daniel, am I telling the truth right now? You're glad now it didn't have set works working. You know why? Because it made his brain think. He said, Reggie, the other day I said, man, how are you doing this? He said, Reggie, I have those, all those fractions memorized in my head. I'm just saying, I'm not trying to puff these boys up over anybody else. I'm going to tell you right here. I'll tell you what. I'm going to adopt him. You go get married. I'll adopt him, Okay. <laughs> And he needs that. But it's a blessing. Those boys, he worked. Where, uh, where's, uh, where's Austin at? Austin, where are you at? Austin got at my place at 6 o'clock. Here, and I don't know why I'm off on this trail. I want to encourage these kids. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm, it, it blesses my heart. He got to my house about, what, 6 o'clock yesterday morning? Dark 30 fog. He got there a little bit later. And they worked 12 hours yesterday at my farm. I had to go out and shut them down. Because they was going to finish it. I walked out there. I said, boy, shut her down. You've been here 12 hours. And I want to say I appreciate that. That's what we need. I'll tell you, they're not sitting on some, they're not some porch monkey walking out with their hats on backwards, their preachers hanging down their rear end. I'm telling you something. I'm thankful for people that work. And God is going to bless these boys in this church that work. Amen. And you girls. I didn't say you girls didn't work. I just don't know much about what's going on. But I'll tell you something. Listen, I appreciate the girls that work and the boys that work in here. And that's number seven is work. Learn and work. You learn to use your back and your brain. Learn to use your back and your brain. And if you ain't got work to do, exercise. You know what Ruth did? You girls get a hold of this. Ruth didn't go down to the WIC office. uh, Ruth didn't go down to the welfare office. Ruth was a widow. Ruth was broke. She was in worse poverty than anybody in this building. She went down to glean in the fields. And I want to tell you, if you think God didn't bless the, give her fruit of a disciplined life. I'm just saying work. Number eight, we've got to roll. Spending habits. Spending habits. Hey, quit blowing your money. You want something? Quit blowing your money. Some of y'all say hallelujah, glory to God right there. Quit blowing your money. Some of you sitting around spending your life being jealous because somebody's got a nice truck or got a house. You don't know how long they worked for that and how hard they worked for that and how much they saved and did without so they could have it. Now, I'll tell you, I've got an affinity for dirt. I love dirt. And I love trees. And I love grass. And the dirt that it grows out of. But I'm going to tell you something. 
I ain't rich in that method, but here's what I'm going to get to you. How many of you, you, I ain't got nothing against a nice car, okay? I ain't got anything against it. But I've, I, for me, for me, I've had to figure out. I, I either can have this or I can have this. Amen. Now, I'll tell you, Karen, can ha her car can be broke down, tires bald, and I'll say, honey, let's get another 100000 out of it. We've got to buy this other farm. <laughs> I mean, that's the way I, what I'm trying to tell you is this. You be careful how you spend. You're going to go out here and just spin, spin, spin on junk, 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 junk. Then don't be surprised if you ain't got nothing at the end of the road. Put your money into something that has some lasting value. Quit buying junk. Quit spending junk for junk. Most shopping, most stores, <laughs> I'm just telling you, junk. Now, now guns, boy, that's not, I mean, <laughs> you know. Men's stuff, we need it, don't we, Ralph? New tractors, that's not junk, is it, Ralph? New bears, a four-wheeler, that is not junk. <laughs> okay, but what I'm saying to you, listen, you've got to be careful how you spend if you're going to have something, okay? Be careful how you spend. Don't go out and just blow money. Now, I'm not, not saying you shouldn't take your wife out to eat and buy her flowers and do nice things for her and spend a little I'm not saying that. I'm not saying be an old tightwad. But I am saying this, that if you're going to enjoy something down the road that you really want, it might be that you ought to not buy stuff you really don't need. Yes. Get by with something. I love my truck. It's a 2004 four-door Chevrolet, four-wheel drive. 200 and some thousand miles on it. How many knows what Sam Walton drove? What do you drive, Zach? Huh? He drove, he drove a stage bike and he also drove an old farm truck. And when he would go up there to that cafe sometime once in a while, he never drove no big fancy rig. Ford truck? Ford truck. I don't, but I'm just saying this. That, and I'm not against, I'm telling you, I like new stuff. I'm just saying, and if you can handle it, I've got, you know, everybody has different things they want, okay? I'm just saying this for what you do want. It, maybe it is that truck you want. Maybe it is that car you want. Listen, you can't be over here buying bubblegum stuff and spending 15, 20, 30 dollars a day on junk and expect to have that nice car. Learn to be content. Learn to be content. Number eight. Number nine, care for your body. Care for your body. Uh, I don't know if I've got down. Have I got 1 Corinthians 3 down there? Have I got that written down there? 1 Corinthians 3? Is it down there? Write down first on your body. Write down 1 Corinthians 3, verses 16 through 17. And then write down 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? <clears throat> the drunkard shall come to poverty. How many of you people in here are drunks? I don't see any hands up. The drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. I'm going to tell you something. Take care of your body. <laughs> can't believe I preached this right after Thanksgiving. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to challenge you to do something. Go back and find the oldest photos of the American, pe American people that you can find. Go back and find the oldest photos of American people that you can find. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. Do not get this mixed up with what your metabolism rate is. Did you know that I can eat ice cream, butter pecan ice cream, <laughs> purple cow, and uh, let's see, coconut cream pie, and everything. And my system just burns it up. I'm thinking too hard and fast. Other people, everything they eat, if they just look at it, they gain three pounds. Okay, now, you're going to have to figure out your situation, but here's what I'm going to tell you. This is not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is misusing your body by drinking or by overeating or by gluttony. The Bible said our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And he said, if you defile it, he said, he'll, 
There's a, there's a built-in law. Destroy, destroy. Okay? I'm telling you, listen. Take care of your body. Walk. If you say, Reggie, I, I, I don't have any work to do. Well, get out and walk. Don't you just hate those exercise machines? I have sold those stupid things. to you, They're so stupid. People give $900,000, $800,000 for the exercise machine, and they have a sale, and it brings $15. Now, I want to tell you something. The next time any of you want an exercise machine, buy a push lawnmower. <laughs> buy a push lawnmower. I'm telling you something. Listen, get outside. Amen. Get outside. Get outside. Get outside. Walk. Oh, boy. I'm just having more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Half the fun is watching your faces. Hey, there's a reason physical therapy works and it does work. You know what they're doing? They're doing what you ought to be doing. And we pay them, you know, $150 an hour to go up and say, now take your fingers like this. But they got some moves that I don't know and I need to learn. I mean, it's good. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that a lot of things, physical therapy, do it. Get out and walk and hit it and go. You say, well, I can't do that. Do what you can do. Do what you can do, Okay. Paul said, I keep under my body and bring it under subjection. I'm going to tell you something. You can't go to Golden Corral. <laughs> mm, and overdo it and expect to feel good that night. You say, I, I, can't, I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. That's why you do it in the afternoon. Okay. All right. Amen. Listen, did you know what? You're going to go, if you're going to go to mission field, you need as, as much physical strength and healthy body as you can possibly have. Amen. As much as you can possibly have. And, uh, and, and I'm, again, I've, I've failed in this. I'm telling you what, I see a, a keg ice cream. I mean, it's over with. Amen. Then number 10. This is more important than that. Care of your mind. Write down Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8. And Romans chapter 8, verse number 6. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Boy, God help us to be spiritually minded. Do you know what carnally minded is? All you think about is the bad stuff all the time. All the time. Bad stuff all the time. Negative, negative, negative. What everybody's done to me. What, what they think of me. They don't like me. Well, look what they did. Blah, 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 blah. That old carnal minded. God says it's a killing you. To be spiritually minded... Love your enemies. Forgive. Do good unto them. Pray for them. Spiritually minded. Okay, care, take care of your mind. Hey, by the way, that means keep your mind clean. Keep your mind holy. The Bible said, gird up the loins of your mind. How many ever had sagging mind? The Bible says, gird up the loins of your mind. Don't allow yourself. You say, Reggie, I got depressed. I have too. Get up and keep going. You ain't the first one been depressed. Care of your mind. Number 11, control of your passions and drives, moral purity. Control of your passions and drives, moral purity. Paul said again, I keep my body under subjection. Crucify the flesh. Be alert, be discerning. Paul said, uh, uh, David said, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I'll set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I want to tell you something. More men have been taken down by lack of, of uh, controlling their passions and drives than any other thing you can mention. Number 12, serve God and others. That's a discipline. Hey, hey I almost back up. You know what that means? That means you, go, you turned on that internet. You turned on the computer and the internet. That means you're going to discipline yourself and you're not going where you're supposed to go. Joel friend told me years ago when I was even learning how to turn the computer on. Now he said, Reggie. He said, this computer's kind of like going to Springfield. He said, you can turn down what streets you want to, and you've got to make up your mind to some streets you ain't going. Yeah. Discipline yourself. Serve, number 12, a discipline of serving God and others. Maintain the Bible said, be careful to maintain good works. Serve God. Serve, serve other people. Die to yourself. It's not about us. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's serving God and other people. Be, and then number 13, oh, I love this one. I'll get this one of the best disciplines you'll ever get in your life. Be enthused. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give you an example of that. P try this just one Sunday. Come to church, be enthused. 
and sit there and make up your mind, you're going to say amen 12 times before the end of the service. You say, well, it'd be chaotic and everybody think I was doing it in the flesh. Just try us one Sunday. We can put up with it one Sunday. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something right now. You can say what you want to. People will follow enthusiasm. I want to tell you, God is an enthused God. Amen. Amen. God is, I believe God's wound up tight on I'm think. I mean to tell you something. I believe Jesus is looking forward to coming back. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you right now, I've been hit sideways and you've been hit sideways and you've had it rough and you've had it tough and I've had it rough and hit up. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm still enthused about coming to church on Sunday morning. I'm still enthused about singing the songs of Zion. I'm still enthused. And by the way, I want to tell you something. I don't care what you do in life. You better do it with all your heart and with all your mind and get enthused at the discipline of life that'll pay off. Amen. Be enthused about it. Be enthused about it. Be enthused about life. Be enthused about being, uh, being married. I'll tell you what to do. Some of you guys stop right now. You just hug your wife. Would you just hug your wife? Be enthused about it a little bit, you know. Just reach over and give her a big old smack. See what she slaps you. Was you? <laughs> I want to tell you right now, be enthused about being married. Amen. I've been married for 42 years. That makes me. Eh. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm enthused. Boy, I'll tell you what. Karen and I have more fun than a barrel of monkeys. At least I am. I don't know if she is or not. I am. <laughs> I'm still enthused about her. Amen. Fact of it is, I'm more excited today than I was in America because I, I didn't even have a clue what I got. Yeah. I'm like, how did I get her? Seriously. And that's the way you ought to think about your wife. That's the way you ought to think about your wife. Lord, how on earth did you? I'm, you ought to know something about grace, men. God gave you a wife like you got. Yeah. Well, if you haven't like that, I'll move to the next one. But you know what I'm talking about, enthused. I'm gonna, Jim, I want to give you a word of encouragement today, and I know that you don't. But you know what? Uh, we, sometimes we need to speak to people whether we feel like it or not. I want to encourage you. Sometimes you, and I know we don't want to be phony. I know that, and I appreciate that. But you know something? I, you ought to smile. It, what's it going to hurt to smile? What's it going to hurt? If I got up here every Sunday and... I'm going to tell you, it's bad. It's getting worse. If you'll come back next Sunday, I'll tell you how much more worse it's gotten since last Sunday. <laughs> hey, I know it's bad, but I'll tell you another thing. God's coming back and God's got it under control and he's still reigning and he's still sovereign. And God's going to bring everything into judgment. It's just fine. God is not wringing his hands. Amen. I'm enthused because I have a God who is in charge. Amen. I'm enthused. By the way, you need to knock apathy out of the park. You say, what's apathy? Don't know and don't care. That's what it is. What's wrong with this country? I don't know and I don't care. That's what's wrong with this country. Don't, don't get apathetic. Man, I'll tell you what. You know what, you know what really grieves me? It's not, the, it's not the apathy toward the country. It's the apathy toward Christ. Yeah. Amen. Man, I'll tell you something. We ought to be enthused about church. Be enthused, amen. Be enthused about singing. Whatever you do, do it with all your might, the Bible says, okay? These are disciplines of life. Like, all right. Well, then don't, don't ever expect to get the fruit then, okay? It's all right. Then number 14 is the tongue. Number 14 Guard the tongue. Old James chapter 2 ought to be read every, about once a week or every two weeks. It's a, it, the tongue is set on fire of hell full of deadly poison. Therewith curse we God and bless we men, or bless we God and curse men. These things ought not so to be, my brethren. It's a deadly poison. It's a world of iniquity. Deadly poison, the Bible said. I'll speak no guile. I'll stay away from that defiling, that discord, and I know it's hard to do. Don't be a talebearer. The Bible says the fool but uttereth all his mind. Somebody told me one time, says God gave you two ears and one tongue. That means you're supposed to listen twice as much as you talk. Amen. I'll tell you, if we don't discipline our tongue, we'll spend most of our life regretting what we say. 
Number 15, you want to you get some fruit? Your appearance and your apparel. Your appearance and your apparel. You say, Reggie, I want the fruit of a disciplined life. Then you get these. The Bible said, doth not nature itself teach a man that it's a shame for him to have long hair? Does not the Bible say that a woman's hair is her glory? (laughs) Oh, I know. I'm not supposed to preach on these things because Jezebel might get mad. (laughs) I'm going to tell you something, women. I love you. God loves you. And he gave you hair for you for glory. And men, God made us to be men. And when I say appearance and apparel, what men ought to dress like men, women ought to dress like women. And in such a distinct way that nobody has to come around to front side to see or even try to guess. Something makes me sick as I see somebody I can't figure out whether they're a man or a woman. I tell you, these sorry public schools. Up in Wisconsin this week, they all, you know, they're going to have a transgender reading lesson for the whole school. Thank God some parents got on the ball and stopped that nonsense. I want to tell you something this business. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you right now, the garbage that's going on to our kids is a pitiful, stinking shame. Having bathrooms for that crowd. i tell you what I'd like. <clears throat> there ain't no such thing as a transgender to start with. Ain't no, ain't no such animal. But i tell you what, Kenny, I'd like to have three or four of them for five or six days. Wouldn't you just to work them? We'd take that trance out of them. <laughs> They'd figure out whether there's a girl or a boy, man. I'll tell you what I'd do with that little sorry outfit. I'd put a dress and a pair of panties on him, march him into church and march him around the square. And then I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd put a chainsaw in his hand. And I'll tell you what, he'd either come out of one or the other, but he wouldn't be trans. <laughs> You talk about stupid. Be stupid. Apparel. I tell you, it's important. You say, listen, and that modesty thing, not not defrauding people. Going around showing things that's appropriate to the occasion. To glorify and honor the Lord. Well, number 16. This is an important discipline of life. Conquer discouragement. Conquer discouragement. David said he encouraged himself in the Lord. Tell you what, I've had enough things to discourage me to bury me. <laughs> I had a guy ask me the other day about some stuff, and I said, well, I've had about 1,014 ideas, and two of them almost worked. But I'm still encouraged. Let me tell you, that old Jerry Falwell, one of the greatest things I appreciate about him, but he always said this, test of a man is what it takes to discourage him. What's it take to take the smile and enthusiasm out of your soul? I'm going to tell you something right now. Hard times could be one of the best things ever happened to you. Economic downfall could be something that caused you to start thinking of something you never thought of before. And you say, well, I failed at it. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, failing at it might be the way that you found out what does work. How many of you know that Abraham Lincoln lost seven elections before he ever won one? If he was like most people, he'd have quit after the second or third time and said, well, nobody likes me. Hmm. Conquer discouragement. Be, you do that through faith. You do it through faith. Believe against all odds. Stagger not at the promises of God, but strong in faith. Use your failures as stepping stones. I'm telling you, listen, this is what, hey, can I just say something? All this stuff I'm preaching this morning is the kind of people America was built by. That's exactly right. Bible believing people who develop disciplines. <clears throat> I'm telling you, well, anyway, number 17, conquer and defeat bitterness. Ephesians chapter four, verse 31, let all bitterness be put away. Beware lest any man fail of the grace of God, root of bitterness springing up in trouble you. Learn how to forgive people. Best way to whip bitterness is being merciful to other people and remembering how, how much mercy God has given you. I'll tell you another thing that'll keep you from being bitter is being happy with what you got, not being jealous and covetous or envious of what other people have. Be glad for other people's successes and blessings. Amen. Amen. 
Be glad for it. Number 18, get out and enjoy creation and nature. Enjoy creation and nature. Oh, I'm telling you what, I was a skid logs the other day. I know I told y'all Wednesday night, it's a beat to think more fun than a barrel monkey. It's coming up through there on my tractor, looked over in the weeds about from me to Jim, and there's an eight point buck laying down, looking at me. The morning after deer season. But it was fun, amen. And you know what else? I wouldn't enjoy that. If I hadn't been out working, I wouldn't have got to see that. Can I be honest with you? It was more fun watching him than it was killing him. That's okay. I guess the reason is I've got some deer sausages lined up. I got my deer, okay? I'm just saying to you, it was so much fun. And I got such a kick. I got so many illustrations out of that because he got up, walked around the tree, and laid back down. Susanna said, Daddy, something wrong with that deer. There was. Yeah. She thought he was injured or hit or something, you know. So we got off the tractor and walk over there. And out of that tree cop comes a doe. And he weren't going to go nowhere. He chased her into a treetop. <laughs> that's the truth. You girls know what that's like, don't you? <laughs> and boy, when she left, he left. You know, that's so much fun. I was looking out my window this morning, and I bet you there's 500 geese in one bunch going across south. Oh, they're fun to watch. Just don't walk where they've been walking. <laughs> I like to see them flying, but not walking. <laughs> you know, life is so much fun. It's all around you. I'm telling you what you can enjoy, creation, nature. You'll reap something from that. And then number 19, if you want to have something that will really give you Fruit, humble, humble ourselves regularly, humble ourselves, humble ourselves. God is near to those of a broken and contrite spirit. He gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself regularly. I would say take, take three humble pills a day. We'll keep the devil away. <laughs> Amen. And then number 20, always press forward, press forward. Paul said this. I put those things behind me and press on, press on, press on. You know, Paul had a lot of stuff. He, you know what Paul could have done? He could have spent his entire life sitting in a chair at the house with the shades pulled down saying, I held the clothes while they stoned Stephen. I'll never be worth anything. God could never use me. I don't believe I'm forgiven. He didn't do that. You know what he said? Now we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Amen. To them that are called according to his purpose. Did you know Stephen's, him holding Stephen's clothing while he's stoned worked out for good? It brought, Paul to, it brought Saul to Christ. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of people have been saved through the writings of the Apostle Paul. Because he didn't sit around and say, well, it's over with. I'm going to keep, but got up and said, I'm going to keep going. I'm telling you something. <clears throat> Let me tell you who gets to the finish line. That's those that get up out of the mud hole and keep rolling. I'll tell you, don't you quit. I'm going to tell you something right now. I appreciate my mom and dad. I know my mom ain't felt very good, but I don't tell you, she's been at church every, every single time she can be here, she's here. My daddy, I'll tell you what, they'll get up. And daddy, I know what they need for you to walk. And there's something I don't understand. You're 91. If you had to go to the bathroom as often as I had, all you'd be doing is walking back and forth. <laughs> You're going to have to tell me the secret of that one of these days. But you know what? They ain't give up and quit. They ain't give up and quit. You keep going on. You keep rolling. You, keep, you, you don't let this old world. You keep pressing forward. Paul said, I keep pressing on. And then finally, fill in the last. All disciplines are to be for the glory of God. Not for self. Not so you can say, well, I'm disciplined. Boy, this, look what I did because I was disciplined. It's an interesting thing that Jesus called those who followed him his what? Disciples. Disciples. It's done, all discipline is for the glory of God 
and by the grace of God. For the glory of God and by the grace of God. I want you to anticipate the fruit of a disciplined life. That doesn't mean that you're some kind of corker saying, no kids, we're not going to buy an ice cream cone. We're saving up for the farm. That's not saying, no, we're not going camping. Do you realize how much hot dogs are? Go camping, amen? Discipline yourself and go camping. (laughs) Discipline yourself. Do something with your family. Work, 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 work. Let's stand and go home. Brother Lakey's left me. (laughs) Listen, if I'd have preached just like I wanted to, we'd be here at 3 o'clock this afternoon. I had to discipline myself, Sister Laura, to keep her going to the next number. <laughs> say amen, Brother Don. Say amen. It's okay. Listen, I'm serious with you. I'm not talking off the side of my face. And I didn't get this out of sermonette somewhere or something. These are things I sat down this week and said, you know what? To the degree where I've disciplined myself, I'm experiencing the fruit of. I'm serious with you. It's a blessing. God honors discipline. Lord, we come before you today and I pray, Lord, that I have not exalted the flesh or exalted man. But I pray, oh God, that we would realize that you call us to discipline ourselves. That we may enjoy the fruit of a biblically disciplined life. And Lord, I'm going to ask you a special thing that you'd help the devil not to discourage somebody today, Lord, about some area that they're weak in. But Lord, that your sweet spirit would give them hope and comfort. And Lord, give them grace. Lord, there's areas, Lord, where I preach that, Lord, you know how weak I am, how frail, how failing I am. But God, I want those disciplines. And I pray, Lord, that by your sweet grace, you'd give us, Lord, the grace of God to discipline ourselves, Heavenly Father. I pray especially, Lord, in my tongue. That I'd not say anything, Lord, I shouldn't say. That I'd just listen more than I talk. I pray, Heavenly Father, that, Lord, just in so many areas that we need help in, that you'd give us the grace. Lord, I pray that you would bear fruit through our lives as we discipline ourselves. Lord, that we would be disciples and followers of the Lamb of God. I pray, Lord, that you'll bless these families for disciplining themselves to get to church. To get up and get ready and go to worship the Lord. I pray, Lord, give them faith today to know that, Lord, they can anticipate fruit. Lord, I pray their Bible reading and their time of devotion. Lord, their diligent labor. And Lord, their disciplines and areas of life. God, help them to know, Lord, that we often don't see it today. But we see fruit down the road. And Lord, I pray that our fruit may abound to your glory. That we might look back and say, to God be the glory. Great things he hath done. Lord, you're so good to us. Thank you for your word. I pray you bless these people now, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.